enough is enough I'm your host as always, Tiffany, the EVP of Giggles, and the queen of the Indies. <laughs> I'm already done. <laughs> I can't. That's it. I'm done. I'm broken. There's the podcast. <laughs> and you can clearly see we have Tony Depp in with us. <laughs> Hello. And I'm joined also with Queen of Any because it wouldn't be a podcast without Queen joining me in this. <laughs> Aw, you're so kind. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hello, Mr. Deppin. I'm so excited to be talking with you today. Yes. Thanks for having me. I've got nothing better to do right now because I don't really leave my house, you know, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. So, guys, just in case we get cut off because it's raining and it seems to be affecting the Internet and everybody's on the Internet, too. Right. So I have this recording. So if it just dies, we'll just record offline. So hopefully we don't have that problem. So. All right. So so let's just jump right in, guys. Right. You guys ready for this? Queen, you want you want you want to start or you want me to start this off? It's your podcast. Girl, All right. I was uh, being kind. There. <laughs> you were. OK, so uh, so for the people who don't know you, how did you become a professional wrestler? Uh, well, uh, I started Backyard Wrestling in 2005, and then over time, a lot of my friends that I was Backyard Wrestling with, they decided to get trained and uh, go to the Indies, and I still wanted to wrestle. I was like, well, I guess I'm going to get trained and, you know, join the independent circuit like my friends so I could still wrestle. And that was about, like, 2009, so essentially I started this as just as a hobby. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love, love, I love backyard the wrestling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Queen, we love the indie scene so much. So I sure do. I love it. I love it. If you had to kind of define your, your style in pro wrestling, what would be your definition? Uh, I really don't like the term, but I'd, I'd put more of it on the lines of a hybrid wrestler. I've shown I could wrestle. I've shown I could do the flippy stuff, the fast-paced stuff, hardcore stuff. But if I would prefer to have somebody tell, uh, say one style about me, I'd say technical. That's what I prefer. Like, I prefer slower pace wrestling, but if I need to, I will go really fast or really crazy. It just depends. Oh, definitely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing to keep busy during this quarantine? Oh, my God. Nothing. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I watch a lot of wrestling right now, more than I've, and I, I used to watch it all, all the time anyways, but now I'm watching it even more because there's no sports, there, there's, yeah. nothing, like, there's nothing coming on TV that I enjoy watching, so I was like, well, I guess I have to watch more wrestling. <laughs> it's always good to keep up. Um, but I saw you were cooking the other day on Twitter, making some cake, and you become Betty Crocker. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, I, my wife and I, we've, you know, like we have more time on our hands, so we're cooking more. Like we cooked like stuffed chicken the other day with like stuffing and like homemade mashed potatoes and all that stuff. And then <laughs> yesterday we're just like, hey, let's bake a cake and brownie. So we did both that. <laughs> you gotta watch it that like <laughs> two minutes of our time to you know, cause it takes so quick to prepare it. <laughs> we're gonna like gain a lot of weight. I think a lot of people are gonna gain a lot of weight during all this. <laughs> yeah, I I been pretty much i'm just like well like i'll eat something take it back to the kitchen like well this looks good too let me eat that <laughs> i'm like having the same problem oh my <laughs> you're home more and then you're like okay like oh snacks like you feel like you're in the kitchen more because you got nothing to do pretty much like i haven't been home on weekends for many many months and this weekend i was like what do i do with myself because i was supposed to be in san francisco friday saturday detroit Friday, New Jersey. I was like, now I'm nowhere. Like, it's really weird to me to be home this much. Yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, I've been. I mean, I'm very big on like the weekends. Gonna go to like all the indie shows between New York and New Jersey, and and it's just weird for me to not have that to come support everybody. It's 
it's really really weird so i I hope for everybody that this cleans up soon so yeah no kidding (laughs) yeah no we need some normalness we need some normalness but in the meantime (laughs) we have a a fan tweet here and uh this is from courtney and she wanted to know what good do you think can come out of this whole situation um she says i see everyone's focused on the bad a lot of negativity and there has to be some good. So what do you think will be the silver lining of the Corona cloud? I kind of like that. Yeah, right? <laughs> There's going to be a, like a rest. Like I'm looking long term now with it. Like, yeah, it sucks. that Like I lost a lot of money in Mania Week. So did a lot of others. But they say if we're down for two months, wrestling down for two months, that gives us two months to heal our bodies and not just pounding the shit out of them. Like, yeah. Our, overall, I think it's going to be better for our health. Like, it sucks because we're not making the money we want to make. You know, we're not, we're not doing something. We're not, we're just being quarantined in our house. And it really sucks. It truly does. But overall, I feel like it's going to be better off for our health in the long run. And that's one thing I'm taking. I was like, okay, I won't have to worry for two months to like land it on my head and just like waking up really sore or something like that. So right. like, that's, that's the only thing with myself and some of the guys that I travel a lot with. We're going to be able to heal our bodies. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like I always like you guys go through a lot. So thank you for doing that. And guys, go buy some merch for Tony Depp. And all the descriptions are down below. He's got some cool shirts. I got to get the one with you and your cat. Yeah. <laughs> My cat helps me out a lot with selling stuff. Yes, yes. I actually took a picture from your Instagram for our video, the one with, with uh, your cat and your your gorgeous dogs as well. I love, I love, I'm loving all the pictures of the animals. So keep them coming. You should have two goats. So because the other goat will get really lonely. So that's like next on my my objective is to get a, a hairless or not a hairless goat, but a, a goat or two. <laughs> that's awesome. oh my god i love the little when they're baby goats i think yes. they're the most precious things ever <laughs> <laughs> so cute i love it i love it um so we do have another fan tweet from our friend conrad he said what do you believe is the most important match in pro wrestling history the most important match yes oh like that's hard because if I'm gonna go like iconic, like you're gonna say Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant WrestleMania three, like that's so important. Cause that's just I don't know. Like there's so much about that match, and it just like it gave that really huge feel to wrestling at that time. Cause like it's a lot different. Like you didn't see that stuff in America unless you were like some crazy tape trader back in those days. But chances are you weren't. But like wrestling wise, for me. Like, if I'm going to pick for myself, like, most iconic match myself, I'm going to have to go somewhere where, like, when I'm growing, like, not even, like, it's not early time, but, like, when I started getting huge into indie wrestling, I'd have to go with, like, Samoa Joe and Necro Butcher from an IW or Loki and Kenta. It really depends. Yes. Oh, that's a great one. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Those two matches would be matched like if somebody's just like, "What's independent wrestling to you?" That is what I would show people. Yes, I I hundred percent agree with that one, definitely. And if you ever if you've never seen Necro and Joe, watch it. It's yeah. on YouTube. There you go, guys. So much wrestling on YouTube. Never mind all the apps yeah. that are out there as well. So, <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> go ahead. I love it. Um. So I was wondering. Who's been your personal biggest influence on your career? Growing up, I like I was never geared towards the bigger guys because obviously I've heard it a million times. I'm very small. I'm not a big wrestler. I've ne- I've never been big my entire life. Um, so growing up, I always loved Dean Malenko because mm. he wasn't a big guy and he just wrestled. I enjoyed that. Like I would, I wasn't a Kevin Nash guy. I wasn't. I wasn't like a ultimate warrior guy. I really liked the guys that could wrestle. So like growing up, it'd be Dean Malenko. And then as I uh, dug deep into the independent scene, probably like Mike Quackenbush, because I love his style. And you just like, Mike, see, if you would put in the definition like of what a hybrid wrestler should be, it'd be a picture of Mike Quackenbush. Because the guy can do everything. 
and know that yeah he's special like that (laughs) big big no name big no name um queen you had the second part to that question go for it i do i have a a part two actually yes yes. (laughs) Uh, so tiffany and i and i know many others love watching you in gcw yes we were at a show (laughs) recently in asbury park new jersey back in January, which seems like forever ago, but it really wasn't. Um, and we watched you wrestle Jake Atlas. Um, we just wanted to know, like, can you talk a little bit about your experience that you've had working with GCW? Uh, well, it's pretty much put me at where I'm at today. Like, I remember when I first started, like, because I first started with GCW before uh, Paul, I was supposed to be on the first Acid Cup. But, uh, some things came up my way and I took another booking over that and Brett wasn't too happy about it. So then we parted our ways and we, uh, I went to CCW and when I left CCW, Brett was the first person to message me. like, Tony, come on, let's come, come to GCW. And I went to GCW and just like, I feel like that's where I really clicked on me as a personality because like when I was at CZW, they wanted me to be like straight baby face, like, you know, slapping hands, kissing babies. And, and that, that, that just makes me generic. So like, I just felt like my, uh, uh, my momentum was killed being there. And then I went to CZW or GCW and the first show I did back about it, like, oh wow, like I grabbed a whole ref room in the ring, just told him to fucking count because he screwed up the finish. And I was really pissed off. I walked in the back. And some camera shut off, and Janelle looks at me like, Tony, do more of that. And I was like, oh, okay. So, like, I started doing more of that and just gradually. It took me a while because, you know, like, I was just feeling out what would work, what wasn't working. And it just kind of pushed me to the next level where I'm at currently. Like, it, was, it took a long, it took three years when I was through GCW. But, you know, it, it gave me the ability to define myself as a character. And now, like... Brett has a lot of confidence in me. Like, he let me wrestle like David's. I'm getting to wrestle these guys that have, like, they have amazing matches, and I'm able to learn from them. And just now, now that my character's in place, I'm able to learn and grow as a wrestler by working with GCW. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's so awesome. I love it there. I love watching you wrestle there. There's yes. so much great, you know, talent, obviously, and your match that we got to see live, which was awesome. Yes. With Jake Atlas was just <laughs> super special, huh, Tip? Oh, my God. It was <laughs> funny screaming. because it was my first GCW live. So, and me and Queen been saying for the longest, we're like, okay, we're going to go to a GCW together. So, we had bought tickets for the show, and oh my God, like, I don't know how me and Queen didn't get knocked out by somebody because everybody kept diving <laughs> yeah. by me and Queen. And we're like, okay. Like, <laughs> but I love it. I love, I love GCW. I can't wait to, like, go back. So, I need more. For sure. Definitely need more. Um, so unfortunately with the current events, um, you were supposed to wrestle as, uh, Rios at ICW. It was another, f- one of my favorite promotions. Hold on, you're break you're breaking up a little bit. Can you repeat that please? Okay. So unfortunately with, uh, current events, right? You were supposed to yeah. wrestle as, uh, Rios. So at ICW. So how were you preparing for that? I don't know how I was preparing for that because... You know, I say Rios is a high player, and he's somebody I looked up to when I was growing up because he did really cool stuff, hot, you know, bright hair, like really cool stuff. This, you know, luchador style. So, like, well, how am I gonna, well, like, I had no game plan in except probably take a bunch of stupid moves because I was just gonna feel it out. And I was told by Danny that uh, S.A. Rios was down to use weapons, doors. The only thing he said no to were light tubes. So. Light tubes. I love light tubes. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I love my light tubes. <laughs> I can imagine that they do it. They look like they sting and it doesn't look like fun. <laughs> yeah. But I love it. <laughs> the era, Dean Malenko. Ooh. I would like that. Yes. <laughs> if only we had a time machine. Yes. Dean Malenko easily not a no questions asked. Dean Malenko. That's a good one. Yes. 
Um, we have a question as well here um, from Chris, and he wanted to know, what do you geek out about in your downtime when you aren't wrestling? And what's on your quarantine playlist? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm, to be honest, like, it, I'm a really one-dimensional person in life. Like, wrestling's all I've really known for the past uh, 10 years because I've been wrestling. And, like, when I was in college, like, I, I'd go to college, work, and wrestle on the weekends. Like, I, I never had free time for anything. The only thing that really, like, it's not even, like, I... I don't like what people describe it as a hobby because it's not really a hobby, but um, I do enjoy craft beer. Like I, when I go to, when I wrestle in new areas, I always go to a, a new brewery just because I, I like supporting local business. And I, I enjoy the, I enjoy the, the science behind it. Cause like my friends and I brew beer as well. Ooh. So stuff like Fun. that. But like, like I said, I, I don't classify that as a hobby. Like it's not a personality. That's so, awesome. But I also like, I wish, like, because I used to be in a band when I was younger. Uh, I wish I never sold off my guitar when I was younger because I, I needed money because I, I would really enjoy just playing. But, you know, I kind of have to wait until things get situated again where I can afford a guitar. And then, like, on my playlist, it honestly just really depends on my mood. Like, I, I like everything from 80s hardcore punk to Elton John. Yes. Like, I like it all. So it just, it really depends on how I'm feeling or what I'm doing. Like when I'm cooking, I'll always listen to like, uh, uh, Bon Iver or, um, stuff like the Lumineers, like a real folky indie style music. Cause I like yeah. it. It's, it's relaxing when I'm cooking. Awesome. I love it. I love Bon Iver. I love it. That's one of my favorites, especially <laughs> when you're like trying to Zen out or, like I'm trying to focus on a task, like cooking or or getting something done. I always put them on because it keeps me like calm. <laughs> I feel yeah, good. That's what I enjoy about it. Like, I, yeah. When I'm when I'm cooking, I have my Alexa. I was like, hey Alexa, play Bon Iver, and they just they give me they give me a few songs with Bon Iver, and then it gives me some new stuff that I've never heard of. So that's always good. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fun. Oh man. Oh god. But I've got a bunch of questions in the chat. So the first one is favorite cheat meal. Taco Bell. Uh-oh, him and Alex Zane are partying it up. <laughs> Taco Bell party. <laughs> My wife and I were in the finals for uh, the Taco Bell competition. It was going to be the first people to ever get married at their wedding chapel in Las Vegas. My wife and I made it to the finals, but unfortunately we lost. Oh, wow. Oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. Um, also, ask in the chat, favorite band? Oh my god, that's another depending on the mood thing. Like, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's tough on the spot, man. I always go with the top three because I can yeah, never do pick top just three. One. Yeah, if I went top three, it'd be uh, the Wonder Years, uh, the Adolescents, and I'm trying to pick it from like a category from each of my like favorite styles of music. The last one. Uh, once again, Bon Iver. Like I just okay. Like the three different styles of music I listen to, like mainly listen to, but I I, I, I can never narrow it down. It's like somebody asked my favorite movie and stuff. I can't really narrow that down because mm -hmm. it just depends on my mood. Okay, that's okay. Um, then we have one more question in the chat. Says favorite cities to wrestle in. Um. I re there's a lot of cities that I went to that I wish I would have had more time in there. Like Portland, Portland seemed like a really fun city to be in, but like, and then like Austin, Texas. But if I'm going to go with like atmosphere wise, I'm going to say, uh, Ottawa for the C4. Those fans are just, I don't know. There's something about them. They're all drunk all the time. <laughs> 90% of the time, they don't... I don't know if they like wrestling, but, man, they, they act like they do. <laughs> and then, I love the GCW crowd in Jersey and the uh, the, the LA base of fans, that, like PWG and mm -hmm. uh, GCW are out there. Like, the fans are great out there. That's awesome. Like, they're ju they just add an, another element to the show. Wow. Queen, see, we need to go back to more GCW in Jersey. 
We did something. You don't right. got to sell me. <laughs> Seen it several times. I'm going anytime I can. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> um, so who has been your favorite person to wrestle? Or if you get stuck, you could do your top three. Um, I wish he would wrestle more, but he he uh, just has a really bad uh, perception of how indie wrestling is because he's been wrestling for so long. But Unbreakable Andy Harner, I had the best chemistry in the world with him. Like the reason I got any recognition at first, like to get towards GCW, was my matches with him. And Andy's about 36 now, and he's been wrestling for so long that and ever. And when him and I first started wrestling, nobody was making the money they're making now. You would get maybe $20, if that. So Andy still thinks we're in 2008, 2009, and nobody's making money. And the guy is so fucking talented. Like, I advise everyone to go watch Unbreakable Andy Harner matches because he's fucking fantastic. Like, every, he, he's so creative. He has the charisma of a paper bag, which he will gladly tell you that. But man, the talent that guy has and the mind he has is amazing. But, like, somebody that's, like, wrestling currently now that I could actually wrestle, uh, I'd probably say Tracy Williams. I love working with Tracy. Like, even though he hits, like, a motherfucker. <laughs> I've never been hit so hard in my entire life Oof. Like, by him. So, like, I love working with him. Oof. <laughs> I love it. Sounds painful. Yes. <laughs> um, so, from your perspective, what would be the biggest piece of advice – that a wrestler has ever given to you? Um, so everybody's always like, you know, you get feedback from other wrestlers, blah, blah, blah. And I remember a wrestler, I'm not going to name names, uh, but he was saying, he's like, Tony, um, he saw me how to show you. Like, Tony, do this, 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 this. I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, then months down the road, he, we had a show, and he was on the same show again. And he goes, Tony, why'd you do this, this, this? I go, hey, uh, like, you told me to do that. And he's just like, oh, yeah, I did. He's like, well, here's a piece of advice. He's like, if somebody gives you advice and you use it in your wrestling world, it doesn't work for you and you don't do it, it doesn't mean you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. It just means it doesn't work for you. Like, you don't need to follow every piece of advice you give because, or get because you may it may not apply to you. What works for me doesn't work for Dan House. What works for Dan House doesn't work for fucking uh, Manders, you know? Like, we're all different. Right. And people need to realize that. Like, I, there are people that I watched in wrestling, and I was like, wait, people enjoy that? But I'm just like, you know, but what what I see as wrestling is different than what they see as wrestling. So I'm not going to badmouth somebody. I'm just going to be like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, it adds a bigger audience, so whatever. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so we need to know what's your drink of choice? Water. <laughs> Yes. Drink more water. water. <laughs> Everybody's going nuts and doing buying uh, cases of water, but they've never heard of a fucking Brita pitcher. <laughs> like, my it's wild, isn't it? It's great. I love thirty dollars no. for a Brita pitcher. That's six cases of water. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. You're so right. <laughs> I love my Brita. <laughs> <laughs> I had um. Uh, a wrestler that's from here in New York, uh, Nikolai White, and his whole thing is drink more water. And we were asking him, what's his favorite water brand? And then he said to me, I don't like salsa water. And I'm like, what is salsa water? I was like, is that something you put on a taco? Like, he was trying to say seltzer, and he said salsa. I was like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know, if I had to pick a water not to drink, it's Dasani. Oh. Dasani tastes like ass. <laughs> I hate Dasani too. Yeah, Dasani yes. is disgusting. It's not they say you can't taste the difference, but I can't. It's probably the plastic, but it's disgusting. <laughs> it is the plastic. I think you're right. Yeah. Because it's just, I, I won't buy it. I'll go get something else. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Oh, um, so, alongside yourself, of course. Yes. For the future in 2020, who should fans be on the lookout for in the indie scene? I know there's a lot. I wish, uh, like, one thing I'm going to hate about, like, if I ever, like, uh, go elsewhere and get signed where I can't wrestle in Indies, like, I really enjoy going to new shows, like, our new cities and work on new shows. 
to see new talent. Like I watch the entire show as long as if I can, and I I'm not gonna say they're gonna have big 2020s because let's get realistic. When all, all of this calms down, we're gonna probably be in September. So 2020 is gonna be gone, and most of these guys are gonna lose their 2020s. That's true. Yeah. But like I feel like a lot of kids are gonna have a in the next few years because they're younger and they. They have talent in them, but they just don't have the right guidance for the talent yet. Um, ben Carter, which he was just on the GCW show, like I've I've been on a few shows with Ben for a, a long time in the past like year and a half. Um, uh, Jaden, oh, what the hell is his name? He's from uh, Portland. I I wrestled him. I can't. I, I'm so sorry. I forgot your last name, Jaden. Like. But I remember I wrestled him at Prestige and I slapped the living shit out of him. I felt so bad. I felt like I hit him so hard his soul left his body. Oh. <laughs> but I think I think if he gets the right eyes on him and the right the right uh, person to work with to really help him, mm-hmm. he'll be good. I like Jaden Newman out of the Tennessee. I think he's from Tennessee. I know he wrestles a lot in Tennessee. Giving uh, like I feel like uh, if help right after I'm either done wrestling completely or like off the indies he could take my position and like the way I wrestle but like he just like I said he's in his guns I wrestled him before and like I like I, he will be there in like two years but right now it, it just it's still in the developmental stage but he's he's 21 so yeah. he's got a lot of time on his hands and he's like I'm 30 I'm gonna be 32 in a month and a half so, like, I wish I was at the stage of some of these kids were at 21. Wow. Sadly, <laughs> it took me longer because you didn't have you didn't have the uh, outlet you have you have today. Yeah. Like, it was, like the only way my sh- my matches would be on the internet is if I took my own camera and recorded and put it on YouTube. So. Oh wow. But, like those three, I feel like I think they have a lot to offer. They just need that next little guidance, like. Like you got guys like Manders, like I would say he's gonna, he, he'll. I'm not gonna put his name in that because he's he's on his way there already because he's got the guidance. Like he's working with some of the best wrestlers right now, so he's perfectly fine. But he was able to get there really quick with it because of the fact that he was working with top tier talent. Wow. Go ahead, guys. Look on YouTube. There's plenty on there. I love it. I love it. I love finding out new talent because. Me finding everything here in New York, New Jersey, but I'm always open to hear like new names on. All oh, over. Some, oh, and quick, somebody that needs to get one because you said New York and stuff it made me think. Yeah. Somebody like he's been around forever, but fucking Grim Reaper. Yes. Man. Yes. yes! <laughs> Absolutely. One, one legit run. I love Grim Reaper. He's fucking. He's so good. Yes. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um. So we have a fan tweet from our friend Charles. He wants to know what is your favorite TV series. Uh, it may get slack because she had her little fall off, but Roseanne. <laughs> that was fun. Like, I, I grew up that. watching. I grew up watching Roseanne, and uh, a lot of uh, the stuff that went on there, it kind of really hit home with m- my current part in life. Like, because my the way Roseanne is like on TV and stuff like that, where she's like boisterous and loud. That's my mom. <laughs> my mom doesn't take shit so like Roseanne always reminded my mom minus uh taking Ambien and claiming to be racist from it so but I would I'd pick Roseanne easily that I used to have every single season on DVD and then I gave it to my brother's girlfriend because I just like eh, I don't watch anything anymore oh <laughs> oh my uh we have another fan tweet from <laughs> actually ICW Isaac said ask him if quote he's good <laughs> I, I wish I could oh yeah I have oh, I could put the thumbs up I'm good <laughs> See, there, there's an uh, ongoing story with us. See, when GCW went to LA for the second time the gentleman that owned the building fucking nice as hell uh, and he'd always ask you if you wanted to do dabs like he just lived there or something like that and he'd always do dabs with you and he would walk around every five seconds like, hey, are you good? And he'd give you the thumbs up. Like, he, I remember the one time he was walking down the steps. He stops. He's like, Tony, you good? Give me the thumbs up. I give him a thumbs up. I'm good. Walks all the way down the, st- and the stairs. 
he's looking around. He looks up. He's like, you good? And I was like, I'm good. <laughs> and he's just still like, and then he's wandering around back, comes back and looks at me again. He's like, are you good, Tony? It's like, I, I'm good, man. Like, so such a nice guy. <laughs> he is. I love Isaac. We always, we kind of integrated over here to the, the East Coast. But I was like, you good? And just give him the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> I love Isaac. Shout out to you, Isaac. You don't have to say I'm good. You just have to give the thumbs up. <laughs> I'm gonna start doing that now when I see him. <laughs> Such good people. Uh, um. So, what has been your most memorable moment? Um. Honestly, a lot of. My most memorable, I can't, I, I don't think I have one yet. I think one of the most memorable things about any of this going on right now is the reaction I, I get from crowds is insane to me. Like, it's not it's not me trying to pat myself on the show. I'm saying, like, when I go to different cities and people cheer for it, like, they hear my music and they're like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> holy shit. Like, I'm just some kid. Like, I grew up in a really small town in Pennsylvania. And, and like, this is... It's surreal to me that people react that way. Like, I remember I did PWG Mystery Vortex last year, and Mystery Vortex, they don't tell a single person to be on the card. You have no idea what's going to happen. You just pay for your ticket, hope for the best. So I'm really nervous because I was like, oh, this is PWG, my first time here. And um, I've only been on the – that was the second time I was on the West Coast only was with GCW twice, and then that time I was like – what if nobody responds? Like, what if I go out there and it's like, it's, it's you know, dead silent. And I was really nervous. And so I was the first match and my song hit. And a lot of people like music hit and they, it took them a second to register my theme. And then as soon as they realized it was my theme, everybody just went nuts. Like flipping out. I walked out, people were going nuts. And the instant that happened, like all of my worries of like forgetting spots or like fucking up, I was like, I've got this. It's like, this is insane. Like, and then I walked in the back and I was talking to Jeff Cobb. And I was like, he's like, well, how'd your match? Cause like, oh, I was solid. Like it was nothing amazing. My match wasn't nothing amazing. Like, I'll gladly say that. It's just like a really good opener. He's like, Tony, uh, that was the biggest reaction anybody's ever got at a mystery vortex for their debut. He's like, you'll be back. So like just having that and then like walking out like for GCW shows, you know, it was insane. Like, I remember I, I was just watching me and David Starr's match, and when my music hit and I came out, people were going nuts. It's like, wow, this is, like, it, it's just, it, it's something to me that, like, that people actually believe in me enough that that's how they react when they they hear my music. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. <laughs> we're definitely two of them, huh? Yeah, we're definitely. <laughs> we're two yeah. of your big fans over here, so... I mean, I don't know, like, what I always go back also even to, like, that ICW show in Jersey recently, and you were in the Daisy Dukes against Killer Cross. <laughs> Man, I felt for you when you got thrown across from the ring into the floor. I was like, oh, man. I was like, that had to hurt. <laughs> I was like... The worst thing is, like, I wasn't planning on wearing... I was just planning on wearing jeans. Because <laughs> Danny's like, hey, don't wear your wrestling gear. I was like, okay, whatever. So I was like, I'm going to wear jeans. And I didn't pack any underspandex. I always wear underspandex underneath my tights. And uh, I saw everybody was wearing jeans. I was like, okay, I'm, I don't want to be like everybody else. Let me uh, let, let me cut these into Daisy Dukes. <laughs> but I was like, shit, I don't have any underspandex. I just have my boxers on. So during the match, like, Cross and I, we didn't, like, we didn't really dictate the way the finish was going to go except for the, the uh, like, just what was going to happen for the end. Yeah. We're like, we're like, okay, this is going to be it, but we're not going to really say how many times we're doing or doing this. So he's doing the thing to me and he does it to me again. I go, and I whisper in his ear just by like the way I was positioned. I go, Hey dude, my balls are falling. <laughs> Cause if you no. would have continued, my balls would have been hanging out of the shorts. And he's like, Oh, okay. I'm like last one. <laughs> Cause like I, I didn't, I didn't expect to have short shorts like that wearing. So I didn't have any undersmacks to keep everything in place. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good Jeez. sport, man. You really are. You really are. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have done a lot in your career thus far, but what do you still want to accomplish? Some point be on something that's nationally televised. Like, Same. I remember... <laughs> Four years ago, uh, or like five, 
Yeah, going on five years ago, I was going to stop wrestling because I wasn't doing anything. Like, I wasn't – like, I, it was hard for me to get bookings out of Jersey. I don't know why. I just, like – I could – like, I, would, I was doing cool stuff, but I guess that wasn't good enough at the time. Mm-hmm. So, I was getting ready to quit wrestling, and then my wife decided – she's like, hey, can you just, like – I like watching wrestling. Give it one more shot. And that one more shot was what got me the momentum I needed. So then I created a bucket list of things to do. And a lot of them seem really like, to me, impossible. But now looking at them, I was like, that was really easy. Like it was like wrestle like five in, like big independent wrestling names that I, that I consider big. Wrestle in front of 300 people. I've already wrestled in front of 2,000 people. Get like a big pay, like a, like a payday that I thought was crazy. And now I'm just like, that's what I, that's what I average. And it's like, get flown by two, per, get one, get one flight paid for me. In the middle of in, in October, I got flown like twelve times. That's awesome. You know, it's like, and the only one that I have not done yet was being on national TV. And I had like thirty items on that bucket list, and I I destroyed them in a matter like when I got real momentum going, I I shattered them in six months, if that. Wow. Like I used to think working at CCW that was on the bucket list. I was like, oh man, debut for CCW really cool. I never put PWG up there because I never thought I could get there. And I did for PWG, you know? Wow. So, like, it, now I just need that, whether it's ROH or AEW, uh, fucking uh, extra WWE, I don't know. Like, yeah. I just want, that's one more thing I want to accomplish. Well, I hope, like, Ring of Honor, like, brings you back, unfortunately, with all this stuff going, yeah. uh... You know, that you were supposed to make your debut. So, like, I I really hope, like, soon all this goes because, I mean, I was so excited when, you know, that was announced. So, I'm sorry, but it will happen. I know it will, definitely. So It will happen. It will happen. I have a lot of people, like, when I, because uh, uh, when ROH did a free show in Baltimore, um, I was flying home from Chicago that day. And where they were running was, it's literally legit five minutes from the airport. So, my wife, her two friends that she met through where she works they're ring of honor fans and there's like hey we want to go and my wife's like hey can you pick up tony from the airport and we'll all go together so we went and zane was on the show blake was on the show and like uh tyler bateman brody king like all these people that i'm friends with and they found out i was there like yo marty wants you to come in the back marty wants to meet you so like i went in the back and then like everybody's like no tony tony go go talk to marty go talk to marty so like i have the support there like, and this would have probably, like, originally I was only supposed to do one ROH date. They only wanted me for the Columbus date. And then after consideration, Marty messaged me. He was like, Tony, I want you for both dates. Is that okay? It's like, yep, let's do it. So, wow. like, I, I have I have the I have, I have the help there to get me there, like, to speak very well of me. Now I just need things to fall into place for me. I will. It definitely Which I, I want, I want, like, I was hoping, like, because I lost a lot of money. Like I, I, I hate the fact that I lost so much money uh, with Mania Week, but I was really disappointed with that, about ROH having to bail on it, which I, I, I understand why they had to. And I would love for ROH to come at me like with like a contract. Because they pay better than what people think, and that's that. And I want, I have a, my, uh, an idea where I want to get paid, because like my thing is uh, my wife doesn't necessarily like her job, and she wants to go take another job in like a marketing firm. And I'm just like, if I get signed with ROH, you are quitting your job because we can afford to do it. Like, so like, I want to be able to give back to her because she gave me the opportunity to uh, quit my job. Because when I quit my job, it was all because of her. She's like, do it. You're miserable and you're making good money. So I want to be able to reciprocate that now. That's so great. Oh, I love hearing that. I love these stories. That's why I like talking to all you guys. I love hearing the backstories. They're so great. Um, so I have a question that I ask everybody that comes on this podcast because it's always, there's always great stories. What's been the craziest thing a fan's done to get your attention? I don't know there's anything, like I've had creeps DM me, that's, (laughs) I don't think there's anything like too creepy, like. There's this one girl, like, and I tell my wife, I, anybody, like, male, female messages me, like, something sexual, like, I tell my wife right away, and it's not because, 
I think she's going to search through my phone because she won't, because she trusts me. Because I just know her reactions will be like, oh, that's hot. She's like, because she looks at it as like, that's that's my husband these people are hitting on. Like, she, she, it's like a pat on the back. She's like, all these people hitting on you, and you're married to me. Like, that's the way she looks at it. That's great. That's a good outlet. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love it. I had some girl, she's like, oh, uh, I, you know, uh, I want to come to one of your shows. Like, oh, I'm like, I hope to see you at one of the shows, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, maybe we can get a drink afterwards. I was thinking, fucking creep. And it's like, no, not happening. And then if you go to her uh, her timeline on her Twitter, it's just like videos of like uh, sex things. Like oh. guys it, guys fucking girls and all. Which I don't care what you like. Because she, she does, uh, like she sells stuff online and thing. And then I, I couldn't care if you do that. Doesn't, like if you, yeah, you can make some money. I've told my wife to do it. I'd love for my wife to make money off that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't care about that, but I knew where her tensions were because she just like because she even posted she like she hooks up with a lot of wrestlers all the time. Like that's not, I'm not one of those wrestlers. I've never been that type of person. Like it, that, that's not why I wrestled. I, I don't want people to come at me in a sexual nature and just like, hey, I just want to wrestle. I love meeting my fans. I love getting to know my fans, but not on that level. Like that's a, it's just not who I am, and it's never, it'll, it'll never be who I am. Stay away, ring rats. <laughs> Like it's it, it's flattering. I got it. It's like because I'm I'm 32, and you know, like people are like there. Are people are like, oh man, you're like you're you're an attractive man. I was like, oh thanks. I like, you know, it's good to hear that. You know, you're I'm I'm older and I'm not depreciating in my uh, look category. There you go. <laughs> Tony's on my list of husbands. I know, like I tweeted at him before. My whole list of husbands of all of all my uh, all, all the wrestlers that I like. They're all they're all on my list of husbands. So I gotta redo my list of husband number because I don't even know where anybody is anymore. <laughs> but you on the list. <laughs> and like, and that that's flattering to me. It's like, <laughs> it's just... well, like it, it, it just. Like, cause there's a way, like, uh, there's a way you could joke around with somebody like saying stuff like that. And I, I would never take it in a, uh, creepy way. Yeah. Cause there's ways like my wife's best friend, like we're all, her and I are all close. And I always joke with her. Like the one day she was, uh, like she came over to house today and like, she's like, where's your crock? I was like, all oh, down there. And she's like, oh, it's not down here. I was like, oh, sorry. It's on this side. I'm like, I just lied. I just wanted to watch you bend over. <laughs> She's like, well, you could have just told me. Like, and she knew it was in a joking manner because, like, that's how we, like, I, it doesn't come off as creepy. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, like, there are people just, like, they mess with me, like, okay, that, that comes off creepy. Just, yeah. like, instantly ignore it. Like, I remember, like, I posted a picture or the video of uh, me mooning the other day. And I had people message, like, oh my God, dudes, like, come on. And, like, and Brian Pilmer Jr. joked, he's like, things I'll do for money during this crisis and blah, blah, blah. He's like, one, not get nude. Or get new to whatever. So, like, I jokingly tweeted at him. I go, oh, I'm the opposite. And I had people like, are you serious? You sell nudes? I was like, no. Oh, like, my God. Away from you, dude. Like, oh, my God. God. Make it a joke. Relax. Like, you couldn't tell that it was a joke? <gasps> oh, my goodness. People are crazy. <laughs> yeah, they are. Like, you know, like, we, you know, we have so much fun with, like, some of this stuff. And it's so nice to appreciate you know, humor within within wrestlers, like life's too short. So I appreciate it, you know, with you guys do, but like some of these you guys are creeps. Like you guys are weird. Stay yeah. away. <laughs> like, I got, my humor I, I am not a very serious person a lot of stuff. Like you can ask my wife, she gets mad at me that I'm not serious enough with like some things I always like to take it with a joke ahead just because that's the way I cope with things. But, you know, sometimes I'm just like, okay, you're just Come on, stop. Just leave me alone. <laughs> like, if I was soliciting for that type of stuff, I understand. But, yeah, right. Come on. Oh, and I imagine women have it a million times oh, worse than I do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you post a picture of you in a bikini, and you're probably like, some, all these guys are like, oh, man, you're this, 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 this. Like, you don't even need to like, do I, that. I, you're not true. Says, like, like, I, like, my wife has, like, she's like, oh, I was going to switch a my profile picture to me and my lingerie that I had. I was like, I don't care. I was like, but expect a lot of people to start following you and like creepishly message you. She's like, I know. She's like, I know it's going to come that way. Like she, she understands how creepy people can be. (laughs) 
Oh my god, I can't. I'm done with. I'm just. I I, I have my share, and I'm. I can't as a podcaster. And I'm sure. I don't know if Queen gets as bad as I do because I go to a lot more indie shows than she does. So uh, I, I they all they all creep. So stay away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not all. Some are. I have some great fans. That, like, I'm. I have never been. I like because every. I see a lot of wrestlers like saying, "Oh, here's my PayPal." Uh, just PayPal me money because I'm going through tough times and stuff like that. Listen, I have a mortgage. I have a car payment. You know, like, indie wrestling is my it was my job. Yeah. But I would never just say, give me money. Yeah. Like, I have, I've had fans, like, the one time he, he uh, uh, brought me a Taco Bell gift card. He's like, this isn't weird. He's like, no. I was like, well, I really appreciate you doing this. Like, but you don't have to. Like, like I, I don't like free stuff. I'd rather be able to give them something and they give me something for money I, I don't like handouts i've never liked it like i once had a fan when in tennessee bring me a cooler full of beer a craft beer because he knew i was in the craft beer oh he's like hey i want to buy one of your shirts i go no here's a shirt like you can have this yeah. and he's just like well no i want to i want to support you i go you just gave me like 60 dollars worth of beer you're fine yeah i was like you don't have to give give me no money i was like because you gave me something i'm giving you something in return so like that's the way i like to do business i don't like free stuff i hate it yeah oh man queen you want to finish this off with the last question there oh i don't have any more do you have it oh okay <laughs> well here we go so this is our final question that we have okay this is a, this is a great one and i love hearing everybody's uh responses to this to all inspiring inspiring or amateur wrestlers out there what is some advice that you would give um, honestly, uh, there's a, a lot, when I see a lot of wrestlers give this answer, they always say, Oh, just don't wrestle. <laughs> like, cause it's, it is a shitty business. It, it, it can be, but if you're surrounded by good people, it, it becomes a lot of fun. My word of advice is just like, just because you're not where you see yourself in three years or five years, don't give up on that. Because I've been doing this for 11, going on 11, I'm going on my 11th year this September. And it took me a long time. They say uh, it takes 10 years to make an overnight success. And a lot of people don't want that 10 years. A lot of people want the Leo Rush or the MJF treatment where it's like two years in and you're signed, you're making lots of money. But in reality, that's not the case for everybody. The right. case is you have guys like me, Janella, Pinky, Dickinson, where we've been doing this for over a decade and it just finally got to the point where we can make legit money and it's nice like don't give up because you don't get two hundred dollar paydays here or you know like or get mad that like i used to wrestle making no money and i feel like you know, you have, people have their uh, opinions on that that everybody should be paid which you know yes I feel like you should be comped for gas at least if anything, but um, don't be discouraged that there's somebody making $200 and you didn't get paid because if you continue to stick through it with not getting paid, then it shows me that you want wrestling way more because I guarantee you, I, there are a lot of kids that I know that if they would have started off the way I did, they would have been gone because they wanted the money right away. Right. But that's not the case. Like I talked to one of my friends, I'm not going to name him. But uh, he go, he's been wrestling a lot less than I have. He's like, Tony, I admire the hell out of you. He's like, you've been doing this for 10 years, making no money. He's like, I don't think I would have made it 10 years at the rate you did. He's like, I would have probably called it quits. He's like, I, and he's like, and uh, he's like, I don't know if that says about me. He's like, but I know that shows that you have a lot of passion for what you do and a lot of love. Like, this is all I've known. I've been watching wrestling since I was three years old. So going on 29 years, like I'm, my dad took me to a wrestling show when I was three years old. This is all I've known. And this is, this is the, this is all I've ever, this is all I can really talk about. I, I can't talk about much, much other than wrestling. So like, I have a lot of passion for it. Yeah. I love and it. that's what kind of kept fighting me through. Like there are plenty of times I was going to quit, but I just kept going through it. So like my best advice is just stick with it because if you do have a passion for it and you and you do work hard, it will pay off eventually. Is it? Is it going to be MJF, uh, Leo Rush, Jake Atlas status, where it's 
four years? No. Will it be uh, Chris Dickinson, Tony Depp, and Joey Janela 10 plus years? Probably. You know, that's that's honestly like my, if somebody gave me, that's the only advice I'd ever give people. Like, just, just, li- and, and don't be afraid to take criticism. Yeah. Like, there are a lot of guys that I talk to, and like, I, I am very blunt to wrestlers if they ask me how their match is. I'm not afraid to say, well, this kind of looked like shit. This kind of didn't. And some people don't like that. But it, I don't feel like it's... I, I don't do it because I'm being rude. I feel like it's like... I do it because I care about the, these people on our shows. Because these are people I do see as friends of mine. So I'm very blunt with them because I want them to make more money. Right. The better you are, the more money you make. The better you are at your character, the more money you'll make. So like, I'm just up front. like, hey guys, like, this looked like shit. And there's like, oh, okay. I was like, and they're like, well, fuck you. And like, so I remember somebody respond that way. I go, no, 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 no. I was like, I, I don't mean it in a rude way. I was like, I'm just telling you this because I, I care about you and I care about you making money and you will make more money if, if you tweak that, you know? And it's, and it's not saying that because what they're doing isn't uh, my cup of tea. It's actually just like, um, basic fundamentals of wrestling that i'm just like this needs to clean up because when you clean up on the basics in wrestling you're going to look a thousand times better than you will if you can do a million moves that's for sure so great yeah, that's a bit of a tangent so no Sorry. no it's good. Right. good it's good it's good no it's great advice because you know actually i'm friends with a lot of wrestlers and they look to other wrestlers for advice so i think i think it's great so thank you for that Absolutely. really that's the problem. A lot of wrestlers, like, they want the advice, but it seems like they only want the advice if you're patting them on the back. Yeah. Like, I I, I remember uh, when I wrestled Janela the one time, he messaged me, because uh, after our match, he watched the match. He goes, Tony, your, your, your selling was dog shit. He's like, it was horrible. He's like, and the only, he's like, I remember that my selling was really bad, and I, and I did a match, and Dickinson was doing commentating, and Dickinson goes, wow, Janela can't sell worse shit or something like that. Like, so he shit on the way he was selling. He's like, but it helped me. And he's like, because if, if a wrestler's calling that out, imagine how a fan's going to feel over time. Right. So when Joey told me that my selling was dog shit, I made sure I got better at my selling. Like, and he wasn't doing that because he wanted to knock me down a peg. He wanted to do it. So like, he's like, Tony, he's like, because Joey saw a lot in me. And that's why Joey was very – like, Joey used to say, hey, Tony, stop doing this too much. Stop doing this too much. Stop doing this too much. So, like, I'm going to listen. Because, like, if a guy's making money telling me how to do this, chances are if he's telling me and I follow what he's telling off of, like, the basic fundamentals of wrestling to get better at, I can make money. So, but, you know, if you don't want to listen, that's fine. <laughs> I, you can only You can only guide somebody to – to the drinking fountain that you can't force them to drink out of it no, you know you're right so i did, i offer my advice where it is but a lot of the kids i mentioned earlier on up and comers they always come to me like tony did you get a chance to watch my match and i feel bad bad when i didn't get a chance to watch my match because i watch a lot of wrestling i was like oh sorry i didn't get to but then if i did watch wrestling i sit them down i just explained to them like the fundamental like fundamental stuff and like and the way like if i see their style of wrestling i'm like hey i was like have you ever watched uh, uh x wrestle and they're like yeah 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 i was like well watch the way he uh builds his spots i was like because that will help you get to that person's level because that's who you look at and emulate after and it's like oh okay like working day working with david star helped me a lot because david star was like hey tony um let's do this 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 but then let's go to here 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 i was like fuck that makes a lot of sense and now i incorporate it in my own wrestling so that's great that's great Oh man, this is a great, great advice. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, tell everybody where they can find you at. I mean, I put all your links in my descriptions, but tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, Twitter is my main source of social media. So uh, Tony underscore Deppin. I have Instagram. It's Insta Deppin. Don't try to add me on Facebook because I probably won't add you. <laughs> I have about 600 people sitting in my friend inbox. I I don't particularly like Facebook, and I normally anymore I use it for uh, family or friends from high school. I've slowly there's people like 
and I, it, it's a lot of my own personal beliefs on stuff. Like I post, I post a little more about politics on there. So like, I keep that to myself, but like, but I'll go through and I'll see people's like, they'll be like, they'll say some really asinine stuff and it's just like, or like borderline racist. And I was like, you know what? Fuck you. I don't even know you. I'm deleting you. And it's not to say it differ my opinion. It's because I was like, I don't want to read that shit. Yeah. Cause I, one, I, I don't know you. Like, so like, and the way, the way you talk about people and the way you degrade people and stuff, it means I don't want to be friends with you because if you can't treat people like a human decent being, then I don't want to be friends with you. That's my stance on stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't care who you voted for. I don't care who you plan on voting for. But if you treat people like shit, I don't want to be associating with you. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But those are my main sources of social media. I do have a Pro Wrestling Tees site. I don't know the, the it's link a, to it. Yeah, because... it's in the script. So, guys, just go to the Pro Wrestling Tees, and then you can just look up Tony Deppin. But it's in, it's in the description below, so you guys can click it and go show some support. There's some cute shirts. I need one. They need to start yeah, I, making some lady tank tops because I've been preaching about this. I thought you could. I thought you could customize on Pro Wrestling Tees. No, I mean they have different kind. They have like the unisex tank tops. They're not ladies, which is very different. So I've of, been yeah, a complaining. Tighter. I've been complaining a lot in the wrestling world that we need uh, some lady tank tops. Well, that's hilarious. Uh, I will say uh, I was with my one other my ex girlfriend's time. So about nine years ago. I saw the Young Bucks perform at Shakara, and she was a big Young Bucks fan. And this is before the Bucks became, like, the moguls of merchandise. Right. And she's just like, I wish they had a female shirt. I wish they had a pink one. Because they used to have a shirt with a, a lightning bolt with a zebra. It's yeah. Young Bucks. And she's like, I wish they had that in pink. And I, I went up, I bought a shirt. I go, hey. It's like, my girlfriend says she, she, uh, she really wishes you guys would start making female T-shirts because she would love this in this design, blah, blah, blah. And like three months later, I saw the design start popping up in female stuff. So I'm like, I don't, I, I'm not gonna say like I, I attribute to it, but I think it, like they got them to think like, oh, yeah. there are more females coming to shows than it like what it used to be. Yeah. When I first started independent wrestling or going to independent wrestling shows, there were not a lot of females attending shows, and if there were some females, they looked like the 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 demographic that people always associate with pro wrestling back in like the '70s, like trailer trash, like redneck people. <laughs> Like you'd be like, you would just they would have like a two x three x shirt, so it's just like okay, it's easy. Like you wouldn't have to right. worry about it. Like, but now like wrestling is there's a lot more de- a, 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 a a wider variety of people coming to shows. It's just not like redneck A and redneck B come to shows, which is great. <laughs> yes, and there's nothing against rednecks because I am from a very big redneck town, Shamokin, Pennsylvania. It's a shithole, but I call it home. So it's not me blasting her because I, I, those rednecks are the nicest motherfuckers in the world. <laughs> <laughs> love that. I do. I do. I love it. I love it. You got so awesome. Um, Queen, thank you so much again for coming along as well to do this interview. Oh, thanks for having me. And thanks for talking with me as well. Tony, it was awesome to chat with you today. Yes. Thank you. And thank I you. really appreciate it. It gives me the ability to talk about wrestling because my wife doesn't necessarily like listen to me talk about wrestling all the time she yelled at me once about talking about wrestling too much (laughs) well we're always you know we'll always talk some wrestling with you absolutely so (laughs) so guys go buy some shirts go buy some merch since all this time and go go look on youtube and and fight tv and iwtv and go find tony i mean he's got our stamp of approval we absolutely love him so and we hope this ends soon so we can come me and queen can come see you at uh heck yeah gcw again or (laughs) icw or wherever Wherever it is around this, you I, know. <laughs> I hope it ends. I wish uh, a lot of people aren't taking this serious. Take it serious. Yes. Because there are a lot of people, myself included, and I'm not even saying wrestlers, but I'm talking photographers for weddings, DJs for weddings. Uh, the longer that you guys put this off about how serious this is, the longer they lose money. Because yeah. you're going to continue to be out there, you know, coughing all over the fucking place, coughing on people, spreading this virus. So that the quicker that we get in and out and get through this together, the quicker that we can go back to being normal and these people can make money again and provide for their families. Cause right now nobody knows where their paychecks are coming from. My mom's one close friend, her son's name's Tony, just as just like mine. And he's a freelancer photographer 
and he can't, he had so many things canceled and he has no money coming in because of it. So like, just, it's going to suck being in your house. I hate it. Trust me. I'm going nuts, but it's what we got to do. Everybody's got to do this together. This, at a time like this, this is when we all need to pull together and do everything as one. So I'm hoping it ends soon. If not, well, I'll see you in 2021. <laughs> oh, hope, hope, <laughs> I hope not. We, we need our wrestling. So and everything else is back to normal. So yeah, I need my normalcy too. Yes. But thank you guys for watching Under the Rope. Thank you. And uh, we will see you on another episode. Bye, guys. There's something.